Let's look at the equilibrium equations now. Here they are, a little bit long, but here are the constants that we have. Kw, <coughs> product of the two activities, uh, which means that the OH concentration is Kw on H+. Plus. And here we have an expression for that, 10 to the minus 14 on H+. Plus. The Henry's constant is equal to the concentration of H2CO3 star on the external pressure. That's just a rearrangement. Or H2CO3 equals Henry's constant times the pressure. We had that before, which is equal to 10 to the minus 4.95. Um, why? Because we know what the pressure of the CO2. It's about, unfortunately, 400 ppm now, and we know what the Henry's constant is. So here, this is constant, this is constant because the atmospheric pressure is constant, so therefore the H2CO3 is constant. That's what I said, it remains constant. Here's Ka1, um, it's the concentration of bicarbonate, H plus and H2CO3. Solving for the bicarbonate concentration, we get this expression, uh, which is in turn expressed in terms of H2CO3 star. So we can substitute H to CO3 from the previous line and we get 10 to the minus 11 on H plus. Look at all of these. All of these right hand sides are now expressed in terms of H plus activity. And likewise, Ka2, HCO3 2 minus. Uh, uh, from this we get concentration of HCO3, uh, sorry, carbonate 2 minus, ignore the H there, carbonate 2 minus. That's equal to uh, Ka1, Ka2 on H plus squared times this quantity, and we get this expression with H plus squared. Now we take logs of all of these quantities because we want to make a log plot. Taking the log of all of this, log of the OH gives us minus 14 plus pH, log of H2CO3 gives minus 4.95, log of this gives us minus 11.3 plus pH, and the last one gives us minus 21.63 plus 2 pH. These are the log concentration plots for the open carbonate system. And here they are plotted. H plus line here, always draw that first. OH minus line here, always draw that. Here is the H2CO3 line at about uh, nearly 5, minus 4.95, as good as 5. A little bit above here, sorry for the bad quality. And here we have the HCO3 line with slope 1. Uh, you can just plot that out. That's this line has a slope positive 1, minus 11.3 plus positive 1. So it's, it's intersecting down here is 11.3. Um, here we have the OH line. Here we have the carbonate line with slope plus 2. Sorry, here is the line with slope plus 2. And here we have the OH line. And there's the plot. H2C3 is constant. We can draw the buffer capacity. Buffer capacity goes down, becomes flat, and then it goes up and up and up and up, and then really up. Actually, the buffer capacity is more or less, uh, it, it, it's very good because whatever acid you add into the system, it just gets used up because of the CO2 continuing to dissolve into the system. Now, the pH of pure water in equilibrium with atmospheric CO2 is obtained from the proton condition for H2CO3 star. So what's the proton condition for this system? Well, for every H2CO3 we get H plus plus H2CO3 2 minus plus OH minus. This is as before. So we need to look at where it is satisfied. So that's when the H plus line intersects any of the first three things on the right hand side. So the first thing it actually hits is this HCO3 line here and that's the equilibrium. So it's about 5. Point, well it looks like 5.7, 5.65 I've said here. That's the pH. So just by graphing these things, I mean look it's not that hard to do that. Then you make the graph and then you can read the pH off. And you actually besides once you have this graph you know what's going on as opposed to just calculating numbers and not knowing what the hell it is. Graphs are always good like that. So H2CO3 is replenished from the atmosphere, hence C just keeps climbing as we add base, which basically means that if you have sodium hydroxide in a beaker, 
it's just going to be neutralized in the end because of the CO2 dissolving in the water. That's what that's saying. 